It doesn't matter what name is on the pill bottle. It doesn't matter what name has been given by, by a doctor or a person. It doesn't matter what condition it is. Jesus' name has more authority, all authority, over everything that has a name. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe God wants to touch those of you that have pain in your body or discomfort, something that does not belong in the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You and I are called to be the temples where he resides. The old temple was done away with. He said, no longer will I live in a, a building made by hand, a man's hands, but I'm going to live inside of you. Come on. And you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he wants to dwell in you. And the cross paid for your sicknesses to be healed, your conditions to be removed from you so that you can freely give. You can't give what you don't have received. Amen. We want to make sure that we walk in full reception of everything he paid for us. And the Bible says that he was wounded for all, all of our transgressions. So, so we can move all guilt out of the way. Jesus already paid for that. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities, even the desire to want to do bad. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement, the punishment for our peace. For us to have nothing missing and nothing broken was on him, on Jesus, on the cross. And by his stripes, we were healed. He paid the price. Every one of those 39 lashes paid the price for all of your sicknesses and diseases. Do you believe that? This is good news. Amen. This is the good news, the gospel. And so uh, we're just going to close our eyes. And you can go ahead and put your hand on whatever part you want God to touch. And if it's, if it's not a place you can touch with your hand, just put your hand on your heart. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you spirits of infirmity, spirits of sickness and disease, uh, spirits of weakness, uh, spirits that would want to steal, kill, and destroy the health of the children of God. I address you right now in the almighty name of Jesus, and I cast out all activity of infirmity, all activity of infection, all activity of pain. We command it to stop right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that these are the temples of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives in these temples, and we thank you, Lord. I pronounce over every person here who has their hand on their heart or their body that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. I declare over your cardiovascular system that it's unclogged, unplugged. I declare every vein and artery Every gland that is swollen comes back to normal right now. Fevers go, coughs go, viruses and bacterial infections. I command you to die right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the name of Jesus has come to give us victory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. And I declare from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, resurrection powers flowing into your body now. In the name of Jesus. You just go ahead and start moving. That's how we take it. You start touching it. You start moving. We thank you, Lord. We command it all to go. We thank you as virtue goes in, everything else goes out. We thank you, Lord. Virtue goes in right now in Jesus' name. Now, you just be a good receiver by saying thank you. Amen. It's a gift. It's all a gift. It's not something we can do, muster up. It's something that he does, amen, and has done. Praise God. Are you excited? I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he is our great physician. Run to him first all the time. Don't run to the medicine cabinet first. Run to him. Exercise your muscles of faith, amen? Now put your trust in him. Use the name of Jesus. He says, I give you my name, so use my name. Use my, that's basically what he's saying is use my authority. And, and nothing can resist the name of Jesus. I'm tired of that doctrine that says, oh, well, this one is really hard. This one, you know, ooh, this is like, a, this is gonna put Jesus to the test a little bit. No, he is almighty God, amen? 
And as soon as the name goes, everything else has to obey. Praise the Lord. I love that. Well, God's ways are higher than our ways. Do you believe that? His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's the ancient of days. He's been always for all eternity and he will always be. You and I, we came into existence at a specific time not knowing our left from our right. Come on. We had not one intelligent thought when we came into this world. Come on. We had some urges for food. Come on, we had some desire for heat, warmth, not today, I'm too hot, some cool air wherever you live. Um, but he is the one that is all wise and all knowing. And he put laws in place. Isn't it interesting that God did not first consult our culture of the day, come on, or the spirit of that age to put his laws in place. Nor is he doing that with this culture or this spirit of this age. He does not consult with flesh and blood, but his ways are always good, always perfect. He's perfect in all of his ways. We say that. We say that flippantly, but he is perfect in all of his ways. He has established his ways, meaning he has established how things work, and that's it. They don't work any other way. We can try. We can say, well, this generation, this age, you know, maybe it works differently. Maybe, you know, he, God consults my personality profile about what I'm comfortable with. No, he doesn't. He doesn't at all consider your personality profile about what you're comfortable with. I am doing everyday things that my personality is not comfortable with, but that the Lord empowers me to do. Isn't that amazing? That shows that he is glorious and amazing. Because what I'm doing now, even standing up here, I avoided in school and I didn't show up for public speaking. Praise the Lord. But here I am because of the power of the Holy Spirit. His ways are higher. There's so many amazing things. How about the foolishness of lifting up your hands and that it causes victory. Now this generation, we've had people come to our church saying, you know, maybe you shouldn't ask people to raise their hands. Yeah, maybe we should just tell the Lord he was really foolish in putting that law in place and cause victory when Moses raised his hands. You know, the battle was won when he raised his yes. hands. Praise the Lord. Yes. And, and he wasn't comfortable because his arms got so heavy, it hurt. It hurt, and he had two friends to help him hold them up. And every time he dropped them, the battle was lost. Every time he raised them, the battle was won. So I'm telling you, the law of the Lord is raise up your hands, you mighty people, and God brings the victory. That's foolish to this generation. It's foolish to this day and age. What about having the word of God come out of your mouth like a sword? And then it washes us like water. It washes us from contamination. And it, 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 and it puts into motion this meta, metamorphic activity where we are transformed into what the word of God says. That is foolishness to this generation. How about sowing when you're in need how ridiculous is that it's like no i just want to ask for more and god says no so more okay give away more when i already have a need yes that's god's way it is foolishness to this generation in the spirit of this age but he does not come on he does not counsel with the ways of this world these things are established and they work and so for us to come to God and say, Lord, your ways are perfect, means that we're saying we're going to put our personality aside and what this culture thinks is all right, and we're going to do what you say works, and it will work. Amen? I want to encourage you that, that Jesus said, go into all the world. So wherever we live, go out. Don't stay in your bubble, but preach the gospel, meaning tell people the good news. Tell your friends the good news. You don't have to stand on the corner with the billboard, and I'm grateful for that, because that's embarrassing. But we do need to share with others the hope that we have. The, the good news that Jesus loved us so much that he paid the price to, to forgive us of all of our sins, that thing that separates us from God. He has removed it out of the way. You don't have to live with guilt. You don't have to live with shame. You don't have to uh, walk around without purpose, but you can come close to God because he's 
come close to us. Now, that's the good news. And then he says, not just do that, but make disciples. And I know all sorts of personalities right now are getting very uncomfortable. And I'm one of those. But I have a microphone, and I'm shouting it, okay, even over the airways. And guess what? All my high school friends watch. Right? People I went to school with, they watch. Uh, people I used to be embarrassed to tell that I was, you know, a Jesus person. Um, but they watch. I'm not embarrassed anymore because they need the good news. Now, the Bible also says that Jesus says, I'm going to make you disciples. I want you to, and this is amazing because it says this. I'm going to read only one scripture. One day as Jesus is walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water. For they fished for a living. Let's say that. They fished for a living. Now, this was their regular life. They were just going about their life. This is what they did. They threw nets into the water because they fished for a living. Then Jesus called out to them and said, come and follow me. He said, come and do it a different way. Do it my way. Come on, live my way. And I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets as at once. Sometimes it takes a little dramatic activity, uncomfortable activity to obey the Lord. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Because going on with your regular life is not going to produce the results you want to see in the end. Amen? And so follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. So he's saying, it's not going to take you on a process. It doesn't mean that today you decide, you know what, I'm going to share the good news on my, on my social media. I'm going to tell my colleagues that, you know what, you don't have to be this way or, uh, or, or maybe they're, they're, they feel like they're pretty happy, but you, you can tell them that there's a God who loves them, who has a purpose for their life that's even much greater than what they're living right now. Amen? It doesn't always have to be like he will deliver you from your misery. I'm going to take you on a track to teach you how to do this. So maybe tomorrow you won't win a million souls like Reinhard Bonnke. Maybe you will. Who knows? Maybe it will go viral. But maybe it's one person who just starts to think about it. Now you're doing what God instructed you to do. And guess what? It's going to work. It's going to work. Amen? You're going to be at the end of your life realizing I've impacted a lot of people because I pushed my personality profile aside and I pushed aside what is what is popular in culture and I'm going to tell people the good news and make them a disciple. Now a disciple is somebody that is a student that doesn't only learn to believe differently but also changes their lifestyle. So when we are a disciple of Jesus, we say, Jesus, what's your lifestyle? I'm gonna take on your lifestyle. Do you believe that? Take on your lifestyle. Is this interesting to you? It's really interesting to me. So be a doer. Jesus sent them out two by two to practice. Amen. What you hear, practice it. Do it. And maybe you'll fail. Doesn't matter. Then you learned how not to do it this time. And you're gonna do it differently next time. But I'm gonna pray and pray that God gives you wisdom to win souls and to make disciples. Amen. A specific uh, way for you to reach those that are around you. This is our assignment. And his ways are higher than our ways. Come on. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. And the foolishness of the gospel must be preached. Come on. And, and disciples must be made. Do you believe that? And no one else is coming. It's only you. You're at your job, in your family, in your street. And no one else is going to do it with you. Amen. You're, you take your child to that class. Those people are supposed to be your fish and your disciples. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, I release the spirit of boldness upon your people. And I declare that we are anointed to preach the gospel and make disciples of all people, of all nations, of all cultures. And then the end will come. We thank you for that. We choose your ways, which are higher. Your ways, your thoughts are greater. We believe it in Jesus' name. We receive the spirit of boldness today. We receive the spirit of love today. We receive that intelligent, uh, that emotional intelligence to be aware to those around us and not just to be aware about our own lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
We believe, Lord, this is the season for each and every one of us to bring in the harvest. You believe that? Shout yes. Yes. yes.